What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And today we're going to talk about common internet service types. So, in this video, you will learn about common internet service types such as fiber optics, cable, DSL, and wireless technologies. Oh, one second. My slideshow game is horrible today. All right, let's talk about fiber optics. So fiber optics is a technology that uses glass or plastic threads, also known as fibers, to transmit data. A fiber optic cable consists of a bundle of glass threads, each of which is capable of transmitting um, messages modulated onto light waves. Fiber optics is the fastest type of internet service, which is primarily used as a backbone between networks. Fiber optic cable comes in two major types. You have single mode, which has a thin core between 8 and 10 microns in length designed to carry a single light ray long distances up to 60 kilometers or further. And single mode cable uses a laser diode as a light source. Typical uses include cable TV and television companies. And then you have multi mode, which has a thicker core. 62.5 microns, um, it's thicker than a single mode cable. It carries multiple light rays for short distances up to 10 kilometers. Multi mode cable uses, a, uses an LED light source. Typical uses include local and metropolitan area networks, also known as LANs and MANs. All right, so fiber optic devices and cables, they use one of the, of several connector types. So you have the SC, which uses square connectors. The LC uses square connectors. And the ST uses a round connector. Some of the advantages and disadvantages of fiber optics. So some of the advantages are Fiber optic cables have a much greater bandwidth than metal cables. This means they can carry more data. Fiber optic cables are less susceptible than metal cables to electro electromagnetic interference. Fiber optic cables are much thinner and lighter than metal wires. The data can be transmitted digitally, which is the natural form of computer data rather than analogically. Fiber optic is very is a very secure medium data transmission and the uh, optical network terminal, also known as ONT, could be located at your home so that neighborhood Internet usage will not affect your connection speed. So when they're talking about neighborhood Internet usage, they're talking about when everybody in your community is on the Internet at the same time and then your connection slows down to where you it takes forever for your web page to load up or your videos start buffering or if you're live streaming, your connection goes in and out. It's harder to do that with fiber. A few disadvantages are fiber optic is difficult to install because it is made of fragile glass or plastic fibers. And there is a higher cost associated with fiber optic cabling or DSL wiring. All right, let's talk about cable. So prior to the advent of fiber optics, the fastest Internet service available to home and business customers was cable Internet. Cable Internet is a form of broadband Internet access, which uses the same RG6 coaxial cable as cable television, but adds a device called a cable modem to convert the signal for use by computers and home business networks. So here's a picture of the RG6 coaxial cable. I'm pretty sure all of you guys have seen this or you currently have one in your house right now hanging out the back of a cable modem, which is the picture there on your right. So uh, typical cable Internet speeds range from 10 megabits per second up to 100 megabits per second. But some operators are now offering 500 megabits per second and 1000 megabits per second, which is also one gigabit per second speeds by using fiber optic service. Cable Internet pricing varies with the downstream and upstream speeds chosen. Symmetrical service, which is basically the same downstream and upstream speed, is typically only offered to business customers in most cases. Most cable ISPs, which stands for your Internet service provider, but most cable ISPs do not have data caps. 
To determine the actual upstream downstream speeds your connection achieves with an ISP, use a speed testing website. Most ISPs provide speed testing web page links on their customer service page, or you can download apps on your smartphone. They have those available as well. Um, upstream refers to the data, page requests, email, and so on that is being sent from your computer or your network to the internet. So just think of uploading. Downstream, also known as downloading, refers to any information being received from the internet. So this image right here is what a speed test, your average speed test will look like. Like I said, you can actually download these on your smartphones. I have one right here. If you go on to your phone here and you do a search for the app called Speed Test, you just download it and then you just hit the go button and then it'll start conducting a speed test showing you what your upload download rates are. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of cable. So the advantages of cable is that it's an always on connection, meaning that there's very little interruption with cable unless something happens at the ISP or somebody comes through and cuts a cable line in your in your yard or something like that. And then there's and then cable has a faster dial up connection than that of a DSL, which we'll talk about next. Uh, the disadvantages of cable are speeds are sometimes slower than fiber or they depend on how many people are in an area connected at once because the neighborhood shares an ISP backbone, which is a main connection to the Internet. So, like I said earlier, if you live in a subdivision or you live in a certain area where everybody pretty much shares a similar Internet service provider, um, once the Internet leaves your house and hits what they call a demarcation point, basically those Internet cables are, quote unquote, funneled into a tunnel, a quote unquote, tunnel system to where they're bundled up with all the other internet services that are coming out of everybody else's house into your neighborhood. And then that signal is ran back into your ISP, your internet service provider. So what normally happens is if everybody is using the internet at the same time, or there's a, a bunch of people in your neighborhood using the internet at the same time, it can cause issues with your upload, your um, uploading and downloading speeds is what that's talking about. And also another disadvantage is cable is not available in all areas. Let's talk about DSL, also known as Digital Subscriber Line. DSL is a communication medium used to transfer digital signals over standard telephone lines. Along with cable internet, DSL is one of the most popular ways ISPs provide broadband internet access. DSL used by telephone companies to provide internet services at speeds much faster um, than that allowed by analog or you know, just regular dial up internet services while allowing traditional analog telephones and devices such as fax machines to share the same connection. To make this possible, devices called DSL micro filters are attached between telephones and telephony devices such as answering machines, voicemails and fax machines to prevent uh, interference with DSL signals. Uh, DSL is really popular in uh, country areas, you know, uh, you know, non-urban areas. I, sh I put it that way. So if you go out to the country to visit your relatives, you know, they got cows and chickens running around all over the place and their next door neighbors like two miles down the street. Don't be surprised if they have a DSL connection in their house. All right. So uh, let's see. Oh, let's get on to the uh, other part. So traditional DSL, it runs over telephone lines that were originally developed for voice services only. It is far slower than a cable Internet connection. Traditional DSL speeds range from 768 kilobits per second to 384 kilobits per second for your downstream and upstream to as high as six megabits per second for your up and 768 kilobits per second for your down or excuse me, you're down and you're up. Speeds increase as the distance between the DSL service location and the central switch, also known as the central office, providing the DSL connection increases. Most DSL providers do not have data caps. So basically, the further you are away from your ISP, the slower your connection will be with the DSL connection. Some of the advantages and disadvantages. So the advantages of DSL is it is faster than dial-up, 
and users can connect to the internet and talk on the phone simultaneously. Unlike dial-up back in the 90s, when I was a teenager and we first got internet put into our house in like 1994, 1995, I remember my father would get on AOL and it would make that weird sound. And then he would always yell to us, don't pick up the phone. Because the moment you picked up the phone, he got disconnected from the internet. Uh, DSL disadvantages. So it is inconsistent internet connection speeds. It provides inconsistent internet connection speeds. And that's based off a of distance to that you are, the distance that you are from your ISP. It's available in limited distances from the service provider. I just said that. Speeds drop uh, the greater the distance from the connection to the internet, which is also known as the central office, the central switch, central switch. And it's slower than cable or fiber connections. All right, let's talk about wireless. So wireless internet service is the type of internet service that provides connectivity through wireless means. Wireless internet service for homes and businesses permit permits locations that are beyond the reach of fiber, cable, or DSL services to connect to the internet. There are three types of wireless categories. You have RF, which stands for radio frequency, satellite, and cellular. Radio frequency wireless is also known as a fixed wireless service. A fixed wireless ISP, also known as a WISP, uses a signal tower to send and receive microwave frequency radio signals. Each customer location has a small antenna designed to connect to a wireless ISP signal tower. The antenna is connected to a wireless modem, which can be connected directly to a PC or to a router for sharing the connection. Most fixed wireless ISPs use multiple towers. Unlike cellular service, a fixed wireless ISP's connection to a customer relies on a line of sight signal. This is necessary because an RF signal is focused, unlike cellular, which uses an omnidirectional, which means it receives and transmits signals in all directions. Consequently, the customer's antenna is typically mounted on the roof or an antenna tower to permit an unobstructed signal to the nearest tower. The signal from the tower is routed to an RF modem in the house or office. So what you're looking at here is a receiver on somebody's roof. And this receiver is practicing what is called line of sight. That means that there is a direct line of communication between the receiver and the transmitter, which is the RF tower. And there can't be any buildings or any trees or any major objects to prevent that signal from traveling to that receiver. Because if it is, it's going to mess up the, uh, the communication signal and people won't be able to get access to Internet. All right, let's talk about satellites. Satellite Internet access is Internet access provided through communication satellites. Satellite Internet, satellite Internet services are often bundled with satellite TV service. Satellite Internet services use oval satellite antennas, which are very similar in appearance to satellite TV antennas, to connect with geosynchronous communication satellites orbiting over the equator. These satellite relay internets... These satellites relay internet from ground stations to individual users and viewers via a satellite modem. Satellite modems are proprietary to each satellite service as usually and are usually purchased by the user. Satellite internet services offer pricing based on one or two variables, the data bandwidth allowed per month and the downstream, the download speed. Data bandwidth per month ranges from 10 to 50 gigabits to as high as 35 to 100 uh, gigabits or gigabytes, I should say. Current download speeds vary from 12 to 50 megabits per second to 25 megabits per second. Satellite Internet vendors typically do have data caps, so they do have a limit on as a limit on to how much data that you can use each month. Let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of a uh, satellite internet service. Some of the advantages are there are no geographic barriers. A satellite signal can reach places where cable and fiber are not available. When I was in when I was in the army in Afghanistan, we had some civilian contractors on these little bases where we were located, and we were located in the middle of a uh, a bunch of mountains. And some of these civilian contractors. They wanted their own private internet service, so guess what? They had to get satellite signals installed. That was the only way it was possible. 
And also, uh, satellites, they are faster than dial-up connections. Now, the disadvantages of satellites are they are expensive to install. The equipment can... The equipment costs can be expensive because you have to get the modem in the dish. They are unreliable due to weather conditions. There are data caps on sat- from, with some satellite providers, and there is a slow ping rate, which makes satellite internet uh, not suitable for gaming, video chat or, chat, or any type of voice over IP. All right, let's talk about cellular internet. So cellular internet service is built into smartphones. There are two ways for other devices such as tablets and PCs to use cellular internet services and that could be achieved by adding a cellular radio and data plan or connecting to a mobile hotspot. To add cellular to an Android tablet or iPad, the cellular radio must be factory installed and a suitable data plan purchased from a mobile carrier. To enable devices that have only Wi-Fi connection to use cellular internet, you have to connect them to a mobile hotspot. Mobile hotspot devices can be purchased from mobile service providers. For occasional use, many smartphones can be turned into mobile hotspots. Cellular internet services is not recommended as your only connection because it is slower than most other services. If you guys got an Android or a smartphone, you want to turn on your mobile hotspot, All you have to do is just go to the settings on your phone. And if you have an iPhone, it will say personal hotspot. And you would just turn it on and then set up a password to be associated with it. Uh, This diagram you're looking at, this chart you're looking at, this is uh, the Internet service comparison. So as you can see, cellular is the slowest of the bunch, typically. All right, so that is our class on various types of internet services. So let's go ahead and do some check on learning. All right, so first question, you need to specify an internet connection that provides a speed of at least 100 megabits per second that cannot suffer electronic or weather-related interference. Which of the following best meets these requirements? Would it be RF, stands for radio frequency, Would it be cable? Would it be satellite? Or would it be fiber optic? Which one of these will provide you at least 100 megabits per second and you cannot suffer electronic or weather-related interference? Correct answer would be fiber optic, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, fiber optic signals are essentially beams of light traveling through plastic glass or or, uh, plastic glass, either traveling through Small fibers of glass are small plastic fibers. And most of these cables are buried underground. But being that they are beams of light, they do not uh, they're not subject to any type of EMI interference or weather interference. Cable is subject to EMI. Why? Because the signal is traveling on a metal uh, a metal wire. That's in your RG, what is it, your RG6 cable. Satellite can be uh, disrupted due to weather interference because, you know, you have a thunderstorm outside. And guess what? It can interfere with your signal coming. And radio frequency can be interfered due to weather or, 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 or electronic stuff or just, or just obstructions in the way of the transmitter and the receiver because it relies upon primarily line of sight communications. Next question. You are evaluating Internet service for a new address. One of the proposals has line items for a site survey and a tower. Which of the following services is being offered? Would it be cellular? Would it be RF? Would it be cable? Or would it be fiber optic? So you got a new address and one of the line items that you have to inspect is a site for is a site survey in a tower. The correct answer would be radio frequency. Radio frequency. Why? Because radio frequency primarily relies on line of sight communication from the tower to the receiver. The receiver is normally like a little small antenna hanging off of a business or somebody's home in order for them to uh, get radio frequency internet. All right, final question. 
you have moved to a different location where cable internet service is not available. However, DSL is available. You own your cable modem. What can you do for, for equipment? So how can you get established? Basically, it's asking you, how can you get some internet on and popping inside of your house, even though you only have a cable modem and DSL is the only thing that's available in your area? Is it connect a cable slash DSL signal adapter to your cable modem? Would it be ask if your cable modem is compatible? Assume your cable modem is compatible. Or would you lease a DSL modem? So which one of these will help you get Internet access because you live way out in the boondocks and all you have is a cable modem and all they have to offer is DSL? The correct answer would be you at least a DSL modem. Why? Because your cable modem is useless to you at this point. A cable modem is only designed for cable Internet. So you would have to lease a DSL modem so that you can get access to the Internet. All right. So that is pretty much it. So in summary, we have talked about common Internet service types. We talked about fiber optics, cable, DSL, and wireless technologies. For more information, please visit my website, Technology G, so you can get read up on the latest and greatest so that you can go out there and successfully pass your CompTIA IT Fundamentals examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.